<laughs> What's up everybody? New week, new video and today's video is about my Telecaster and the tools that I use to relic it. I know I made a video about that before but today is a bit more about the tools and how I used them on the relic job with a lot of cool close-ups so I would say let's go. So here we are, that's my Telecaster and that are all the tools that I used for the relic job. It's steel wool and it's a belt that I used for the scratches on the back side to make it look real. It's a lighter and two types of pants and it's this little bad boy here and three different sheets of sandpaper. So how I use them I will tell you now, so let's check it out. So, I started with the body. When I received the guitar it was gloss finished, so it has a white blonde gloss finish on it. I liked it when I saw it at the first sight, but later it looked a bit cheap to me, so I decided to work it dull. So, the first thing I did when I started to work on the body was I worked with a two, 1200 grit and just sanded it off very carefully. It took a lot of time, it took about two hours or something and I just sanded off the body in a circular motion. I started on the back side and then worked forward and after a while I realized that it will take forever with a, with a 1200 grit so I decided to go for a 400 grit and work it over a bit rougher, a bit faster and then went over with a 1200 grit again to make it smooth again. So that's the thing for the body to get off the lacquer. So let's head over to the neck because I did a lot of stuff to the lacquer there and to the paint shop. So let's head over to the neck. So um, like the body and um, the neck was also in a gloss finish so you maybe can see it a bit on the headstock um, I didn't like that glossy finish so much so it's not a problem like I had it with my nitro finish guitar it wasn't sticky it just was about that I don't like to look so I sent it off the back side of the neck again with a 400 grit sandpaper so we got it here and with a 400 grit to sand off the neck I will make a video about how to sand off your neck soon so if you feel a bit insecure about that we can make a video about that it's very easy when you know how to do it so the weird stuff where I received a lot of different opinions about was the fretboard so I had the problem that the fretboard was gloss finished too so, but I don't want that gloss finish on the neck, so I had to put it off, and that's the thing. I went over to the steel wool. It's three zero steel wool, so it's not the finest. It's not for zero steel wool, but that's the only thing that I had, and I decided to try it, and it works out perfectly. There's just one thing you have to take care of: is that you tape off your pickups because that's steel wool and when you work on the neck very smooth and very very slowly slow and steady that's a single steel wall on the um, fretboard because you don't want to ruin it because a new neck is almost the price of this guitar so pay a lot of attention to that and tape off the pick as pickups because the pickups are magnets the steel wool is steel for sure and there is this tiny little, it's like powder or something that will stick to your um, pickups otherwise and that could destroy them so tape them off before you send off your neck or your fingerboard with steel wool pay a lot of attention to that and that's about the paint job and I would say let's talk about the relic job so let's head over So. Now it's about the relic job. Um, the relic job 
it was a decision that I went in and that I made. Uh, go all in, you could fail or not. So it's a classic vibe, it's not the most expensive guitar out there. I wouldn't start with a two grand guitar. So, but you can see the spots up here. We made the body dull and it's white, so imagine that. <laughs> and then we have these areas down here. So for one thing that I have to say about it, I took a lot of inspirations from old vintage fenders and not custom shop fenders. Nothing against not custom shop, but I want the most authentic result, so I just took inspiration from vintage guitars. So keep that in mind. And we have those areas down here, and I used sandpaper for it. So when I checked an area that I want to work on, like up here from the pick or down here from your hand laying on the bridge 20 years or more. I just marked the area and then I walked over it with the sandpaper. Very smooth and slow. I would just do it very light now because I don't want to change the look of my guitar. So now because I'm happy with it. But just use sandpaper and work on. Very smooth, very slow. You can use fine paper and work up to um, rougher paper. So get in, walk over and when you, have, when you want to have a bit of more rough structures down here, I hope you can see the rough structure down here and use 240 grit and go in very rough for one or three times so that you get a rough edges so it doesn't look too round or too clean. Yeah, and then we got those little cracks and dings and downs, and now I want to show you how I did that. So, down here, you, now you can see the scratches and dings and downs. I used a string clipper for everything like that, because they are a bit more stable and they are very heavy. I used this bigger one that I bought at the hardware store, So, um, but you can really work into it. You can use the top of it to create dings and downs, like this tiny little horse or something. And you can use the side, because they're very sharp, to create these cracks. And when you create these cracks, and they all look too clean, because it all looks very even and very woody at the beginning, you can use this, you can use pens to work it out, like here. So you go in with that, and then you rub it over. So it looks a bit more dirty, and I used a very light pen, so you can almost can't see it. But you will see the difference when you're close to it. But you don't want to look at too fake or too dark. So you have to use very light colors to work on it. But when you have scratches down here, or you areas, or you have a grain in the wood like here, you can make it a bit longer. So you can work it out a bit more, and it will last there. So, I would say let's head over to the back side of the guitar because there's something else that's really cool. One more thing that I have to say to the pickguard and the pickup cover, not the bridge pickup cover, don't touch it, trust me, but also the pickup as a cover for the knobs and the electricity. I walked over that with sandpaper and scratched it off to look, to make it look more worn or aged. And then, you can see this area down here, this tiny little spot. And that's when it's about detail. And details are the, the thing when it's about relic jobs and to make them look good. And this tiny little area for sure is from, it creates this mark from playing your guitar with your pick millions of hours. And it's quite simple, you just use a lighter. It's very ridiculous at first sight and but try it out just went over it with a lighter four or five times and it would create a shiny little area and yeah it will look a bit more authentic because of it so yeah that's it for the front I would say we got the body we sanded it off we created the marks we checked the plates for instance here where your hand is laying we checked all of that, we sanded off the neck, the pickguard, the fretboard, 
And the only thing that we didn't work on is the back side of the guitar and the sides, for instance. Yeah. So let's head over and let's check the back of the guitar. So now you can see the back side of the guitar and there are also spots where I took the paint off. Here I used the sandpaper again and the string clipper again for the dings and the scratches. But there's this mark in the middle of the guitar and that's very special because to make it look very authentic and very real I used a belt for it. And I'm a nerd so um, I used my belt that I wear every day. So, and I will show you how I did it. So, let's check it out. I used the belt for it and there are a lot of rough scratches down here and everywhere. And I used this little bad boy and just took it like that and just run over it. Like a maniac. Over and over again. And then I just flatten it out and just do it like that and went over with my hand. With a lot of tension and a lot of power. So it, I want to look rough so and real. I mean when you pull your t guitar against your belt you don't pay any attention to. I don't want to hurt my guitar. And then when I did the scratches in and that's very important because otherwise it wouldn't, like, wouldn't look like that. I just use sandpaper and we have this holes and this the scratches and everything and the color was left in the scratches like here and then I went over the whole area very slow and very steady and worked it out so we have a lot of paint shop that is left but we still have these areas where the belt went through like here or here or here where the color left in because it's a bit uneven at that point so that's how we get this result and then you can see this little areas down here this brown areas that looks a bit like grain I realized that it's grain down here and I just took the grain from here and worked it out a bit more into this area here and there I used the pens again so I realized there's a grain it could come out here or I realized hey man there's a grain it goes a bit in here so I used the brown pen and just worked on it very light to recreate this grain a bit more to make it look a bit more real and a bit more grainy and I've done it up here and done it up here. So as you can see it's a lot about thinking about it and checking the details. So now let's talk about this area here. Now you can see all those dings and dongs around the input. That is a very typical damage that you bring to your guitar while you put in your cable without seeing or without checking where you are. Um, it's a thing that I've spotted on a lot, lot, and I mean a lot of vintage guitars. So I want to recreate that because I really like that and I wanted the guitar to look as authentic as possible. So how did it? So. How did I do it? I used this old cable. It's broken. I wouldn't use the cable that is intact for it because it's a bit rough and I don't know. Don't use a cable that's working. So I just used the cable and for sure I just used it and just danged it in it. With a bit more power for sure. I don't, I don't go like that. But you work it in a bit more over and over and it will create after a while the spots whoops here and the stings and downs and for sure it's a bit over but if you want to have a good result at the end of the day as I said before it's all about the details so check details on vintage guitars and try to recreate them so I have a bit more that I could show you tiny little spots that could make a difference on a guitar so Let's hold it over to the next one. So now you have this area down here. We have it on the other side, and that's the typical thing from people that don't use guitar stands. So 
you lean your guitar against your amp or anything and it will scratch off after a while. So I created that, called it the poly lacquer and it cracks quite even and quite light. I just used the guitar clip again and slammed it in it and created scratch over scratch a bit deeper every two centimeters I would say and then went in with a 240 grit and sanded it off very rough. But because of the cracks that I've done it very evenly and the lacquer cracks all over the place and went off quite easy. And then I went over again with the 1200 grit and to make it a bit even, a bit smoother because I still want to play the guitar and I did it everywhere. Um, I wanted the guitar to feel um, comfortable when you have it in your hands so I worked all the areas over with um, my fine grit. And yeah, and then you have those tiny little um, areas that looks a bit different and that is the job for the pens again. Just check your color, where's, where's the color lighter or brighter, where it's a bit darker, where you want to have a bit of dirt and you could also use a black pen to create a bit of dirt and everything. Just be creative and yeah, that's how this area and this area worked out. Rule one, know where, it come, where it's coming from. Check, do you like it or not? Just because it's authentic, you don't have to do it. Create a guitar that you like. Check where it's coming from and think about how you can do it the best and then take your time to work out the details because that will be at the end um, yeah, as a point if you have a good guitar or not. So, yeah. Let's head over to the next, I would say. Okay, let's talk about another spot. Um, and I mean, we're talking now about details of details. Um, let's check the spot up here. We have the spot here where I sand it off the paint to recreate the motion from picking up forever. I check where I pick most of the time. Almost important, always important. Check where you play. That's a guy from the internet played his guitar for five, for 50 years. And then you can check, check the picker. And here we have a very hard edge on the picker all around. And here I thought it would be cool and would be fun when I smooth it out a bit. So here it's very hard. And then I took the sandpaper and worked it out here very slow to smooth it out right at the spot where it's going up here. I know that's the spot that you can't see at first sight, but when people will play the guitar they will realize it and they will be blown away from it. And yeah, that's a very cool stuff and for sure maybe I overdo this or overdid this guitar for you or for anyone, but if you want to have a good result, go give it as much as you can to make it look good. So yeah, that's it. Head over to the next one. So one last thing, one tip um, for Telecaster players. When you don't have them, um, check out these brass saddles. I had steel saddles on it before. I changed them to the brass saddles. I think they are about 25 euros, dollars, whatever. So they are not so super expensive and they will make the difference. The intonation is quite easy I know. And it, sounds more warm and but you still have this Telecaster sound and for sure when you relic your guitar and I bought this additional and um, I think it's about 25 euros two or something or they are 35 I don't know you have to check it when you buy ashtray um, for sure when you relic the guitar relic the ashtray too otherwise it would look a bit weird so yeah that's just an advice from me. So let's head over. So as I told you before, there are also spots that could make a difference because they're very authentic. And for instance, that here, this spot here and on the other side down here, is a very cool spot because I've seen it on a lot of guitars. And it asked me for a long time, where do they come from? So, um, but it's from a strap. So you place your strap here and most sometimes you have leather straps and everything and you I mean 
the guitar that it's reproduced from, we have to talk about that, is a guitar that's from the mid 50s or the late 50s. So it's a guitar that's 70 years old. So, or almost 70 years old, 65 years old guitar. And then we have this area down here, you have your strap here over and over for years and years, gigs and gigs. And yeah, I created it the same way with sandpaper and the clipper again. And but it's a very important, I would say, spot because I've seen it on a lot of guitars. And yeah, for sure, you know how to make it now. But that's the thing. Check all the stuff that you can find on the internet. Go to real vintage stores or sites like Carter Vintage Guitars or Emirates City Guitars. Check their videos and their pictures and everything and find out how it's done and how it's looking. So, yeah, that's the last spot for today. I hope um, that's cool. And yeah, I would say we have to do the outro now and then we're done for today. So, let's head over. So, that's it for today. I hope you liked the video. If so, you can support me. Give me a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe, you know all of that. If you want to know more or have questions, you can write me on Instagram at RootMadudeHamburg. It's my YouTube name, for sure. And you can write me messages there and, sure, check out my page and check out my videos. I really appreciate every support and every single way. I'm very new to this and, yeah, try to figure out what it is. So, um, yeah, be a part of my journey and, yeah, bye. See you next time.